we just went through, we found that the terms of trade that are acceptable was anywhere between 1.33 to 5 units of wheat per car. So for my example now, I'm just going to assume that we're using one car gets you 2.25 units of wheat. Okay. So what would this do? Well, if I take this table here and I imagine that in self-sufficiency, what would we be consuming? So assume that you'd like to have a certain amount of cars and you ha like to have a certain amount of wheat. You could think that both would consume roughly half of each of those. They would spend half their day spending making cars and half their days making wheat. So if I think of Canada here, it would have for cars, it would consume 10 and Japan for cars, it would consume 30 and for wheat Canada would consume 50 and Japan 40 and this gives us a total of 40 cars produced and 90 units of wheat produced by both of them. However, if I go through specialization, so this would be the self-sufficiency case and there is no or here because Canada will consume 10 cars and 50 units of wheat. If I look at the specialization case where Canada only produces wheat, well, Canada will produce 100 units of wheat. And where Japan only produces cars, well, Japan will produce 60 cars. So we could see right here with specialization because they have comparative advantage, they have lower opportunity costs, that the totals are greater. 60 is greater than 40 cars and 100 units of wheat is greater than 90 units of wheat. So just by looking at these totals, we could imagine that it will be beneficial for both to specialize and trade. Okay, so let's look at the case of specialize and trade. So I said here that I will trade uh, any amount between 1.33 and 5 would have worked, uh, but I will use the case, pretty much a mid case, of one car and gives you 2.25 units of wheat. And here I'm just going to think, well, I want to have a situation where Japan has a little bit more wheat than before. So I want Japan to have uh, 45 units of wheat. So to do this, 45 units of wheat, it will have to give up. For every 2.25 units of wheat, it has to give up one car. This is 20 times this amount. Uh, 2.25 times 20 is 45. Therefore, for 45 units of wheat, it will have to give up 25, uh, 20 cars. So if I start constructing this, let's see if both countries will be able to consume more cars and more wheat than before. So if I look at this, I have Canada, I have Japan, and I have cars and I have wheat. So here I said Japan will get 45 units of wheat by trading 20 cars. So 20 of these 60 cars will go to Canada. If I compared it before for Japan, it has more cars and more wheat. It is definitely happier. Let's see if Canada is also happier. Well, to give up these 45 units of wheat, it got 20 cars. It wasn't producing any, so it gets 20 cars. And it was producing 100 units of wheat. I gave up 45, so it has 55 left. Canada also has more cars and more wheat than before. And to make sure that this has worked out, I look at the totals from specialization with no trade, 60 and 100, and this is what I have again now, but after some reallocation. So we could see that it's better off for both. This procedure I've just gone through is tedious for some to do. So I understand if you have a little bit of difficulty, the biggest thing for me in this class is being able to understand how to calculate the terms of trade limits, uh, the 1.33 to the five that we did in the previous video. 
But here it's simply to understand the fact that they are indeed gaining. We, we didn't prove that they could both be gaining before, but this is a formal proof that shows that due to this trade and using a certain relationship that's in between that 1.33 to 1 to 5 range, I've actually made both um, benefit from it. And regardless, if you look the self-sufficiency compared to the fully specialized case, the biggest thing that you should notice is that you will always have a situation where you should be able to produce more of both goods than in the self-sufficiency. The total should be more. And that's um, a good enough reason to understand that in total, both should be able to consume more than before. Okay. But one last thing here I could look at is this idea of what does the PPF look like? Well, the PPF, let's say uh, I look at uh, cars here and wheat here. Well, if I think of Canada beforehand, the amount of cars that Canada could produce was either 20 cars or 100 units of wheat. So this was my PPF for Canada. And when I looked at Japan, I saw that they could produce um, 60 cars or um, 80 units of wheat, I believe. Yes, 80 units of wheat. So this was the situation for Japan. Okay, close enough. Japan PPF. And as I mentioned before in a previous video, we have this situation that here we could see that most of the wheat is produced by Canada. So it would mean that Canada has absolute advantage in producing wheat. Most cars can be produced on a daily basis by Japan. So Japan has absolute advantage in producing cars. And therefore, since they have absolute advantage, they also have comparative advantage. And now, just to kind of give this a... Uh, another go here. Let's try to uh, switch the color a little bit. If I were to have this situation here that now I could trade at this 2.25 wheat per car situation, well that means that if they were to trade these 60 cars, all of them, Japan were to trade 60 cars, well we would get 60 cars multiplied by 2.25 would give us uh, 120 plus a quarter would be 135 units of wheat okay so we would now have the situation where Japan's consumption possibilities is anywhere along this line so now this would be Japan's consumption possibilities frontier and the situation that we had a second ago where I said that Japan could consume um, let me just come back to it can consume 40 cars and 45 units of wheat well it's this situation that we have somewhere around here 40 cars about 45 units of wheat this is where they are now so we could see that this point here is on their new consumption possibilities frontier with trade because as i mentioned earlier without trade your consumption possibilities frontier and your production possibilities frontier is exactly the same because you're not trading with anyone and if i were to look at canada and push it out i would get something similar so i would have to divide 100 by 2.25 so if i divide 100 by 2.25 means that I could get 44.44 cars so Canada could go somewhere from here down to here this would now be Canada's consumption possibilities frontier okay. and the situation that we had here a second ago where Canada consumes 20 cars and 55 wheat well, let's look at this 20 cars 55 wheat 
we're somewhere over here. So the example I just used with specialization and trade with this 1 to 2.25 wheat ratio is represented here and this would have been my endpoints for Canada and Japan. So we can see that our consumption possibilities are better with trade. Trade has its advantages indeed.